DC 130 gun power, 105mm cannon vertical bar 25 or 40mm Gatling guns. What guns are on a AC-130 gunship? The AC-130 is armed with a fearsome array of weaponry, including a 105mm cannon and 25 or 40mm Gatling guns. The AC-130U employs a synthetic aperture strike radar for long-range and adverse weather target detection and identification. The AC-130U Spooky has been replaced by two other gunships the AC-130J Ghost Rider and AC-130 Watt Stinger II. The AC-130J is on track to test fire an airborne laser weapon system in 2022. The Lockheed AC-130 gunship is a heavily armed, long-endurance, ground-attack variant of the C-130 Hercules transport, fixed-wing aircraft. What will replace the AC-130? The AC-130J is the fifth-generation gunship replacing the aging fleet of AC-130U-W gunships. AC-130 gunships have an extensive combat history dating back to Vietnam where gunships destroyed more than 10,000 trucks and were credited with many life-saving, close-air support missions. The Lockheed AC-130 gunship is a heavily armed, long-endurance, ground-attack variant of the C-130 Hercules transport, fixed-wing aircraft. It carries a wide array of ground-attack weapons that are integrated with sophisticated sensors, navigation, and fire control systems. Unlike other modern military fixed-wing aircraft, the AC-130 relies on visual targeting. Because its large profile and low operating altitudes around 7,000 feet 2, meters, make it an easy target, its close air support missions are usually flown at night. The airframe is manufactured by Lockheed Martin, while Boeing is responsible for the conversion into a gunship and for aircraft support. Developed during the Vietnam War as Project Gunship 2, the AC-130 replaced the Douglas AC-47 Spooky, or Gunship I. The sole operator is the United States Air Force, which uses the AC-130U Spooky and AC-130 Watt Stinger II variants for close air support, air interdiction, and force protection, with the upgraded AC-130J Ghost Rider entering service. Close air support roles include supporting ground troops, escorting convoys, and urban operations. Air interdiction missions are conducted against planned targets and targets of opportunity. Force protection missions include defending air bases and other facilities. AC-130US are based at Hurlburt Field, Florida, while AC-130WS are based at Cannon AFB, New Mexico. Gunships can be deployed worldwide. The squadrons are part of the Air Force Special Operations Command, OFSOC, a component of the United States Special Operations Command. The AC-130 has an unpressurized cabin, with the weaponry mounted to fire from the port side of the fuselage. During an attack, the gunship performs a pylon turn, flying in a large circle around the target, therefore being able to fire at it for far longer than in a conventional strafing attack. The AC-130H Spectre was armed with two 20mm M61 Vulcan cannons, one L60 Bofors 40mm cannon, and M137 105mm cannon and M37 recoil mechanism from the M102 Howitzer. After 1994, the 20mm cannons were removed. The upgraded AC-130U Spooky has a single 25mm Go-12 equalizer cannon in place of the Spectre's two 20mm cannons, an improved fire control system, and increased ammunition capacity. The new AC-130J was based on the MC-130J Commando II Special Operations Tanker. The AC-130 Watt Stinger II is a modified C-130 H with upgrades including a precision strike package. In 1967, JC-130 A-54 1626 was selected for conversion into the prototype AC-130 A gunship, Project Gunship II. 
the modifications were done at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base by the Aeronautical Systems Division. A direct view night vision telescope was installed in the forward door, an early forward looking infrared device was placed in the forward part of the left wheel well, with miniguns and rotary cannons fixed facing down and aft along the left side. The analog fire control computer prototype was handcrafted by RAF Wing Commander Tom Pinkerton at the USAF Avionics Laboratory at Wright-Patterson AFB. Flight testing of the prototype was performed primarily at Eglin Air Force Base, followed by further testing and modifications. By September 1967, the aircraft was certified ready for combat testing and was flown to Nha Trang Air Base, South Vietnam for a 90-day test program. The AC-130 was later supplemented by the AC-119 Shadow, Project Gunship 3, which later proved to be underpowered. Seven more warplanes were converted to the Plain Jane configuration like the AC-130 prototype in 1968, and one aircraft received the Surprise Package refit in 1969. The surprise package upgrade included the latest 20mm rotary autocannons and 40mm Bofors cannon, but no 7.62mm close support armament. The surprise package configuration served as a test bed for the avionic systems and armament for the AC-130E. In 1970, 10 more AC-130As were acquired under the PAVE Pronto project. In the summer of 1971, surprise package AC-130s were converted to the PAVE Pronto configuration and assumed the new nickname of Thor. Conversion of C-130S into AC-130S for the PAVE Spectre project followed. Regardless of their project names, the aircraft were more commonly referred to by the squadron's call sign, Spectre. In 2007, AFSOC initiated a program to upgrade the armament of AC-130s. The test program planned for the 25mm GO-12 U and 40mm Gophers cannon on the AC-130U gunships to be replaced with two 30mm MK-44 Bushmaster II cannons. In 2007, the Air Force modified four AC-130U gunships as test platforms for the Bushmasters. These were referred to as AC-130U plus 4 or AC-130U plus 4. AFSOC, however, cancelled its plans to install the new cannons on its fleet of AC-130US. It has since removed the guns and reinstalled the original 40mm and 25mm cannons and returned the planes to combat duty. Brigadier General Bradley A. Heithold, AFSOC's Director of Plans, Programs, Requirements, and Assessments, said on August 11, 2008 that the effort was cancelled because of problems with the Bushmaster's accuracy in tests at the altitude we were employing it. Also, schedule considerations drove the decision, he said. Plans were made to possibly replace the 105mm cannon with a breech-loading 120mm M120 mortar, and to give the AC-130 a standoff capability using either the AGM-114 Hellfire missile, the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, based on the Hydra-70 rocket, or the Viper Strike Glide Bomb. In 2010, the Air Force awarded Dell 3 Communications a $61 million contract to add precision strike packages to 8 MC-130 Watts Combat Spear Special Mission aircraft to give them a gunship-like attack capability, such equipped MC-130Ws are known as Dragon Spears. UFSOC is arming these aircraft to relieve the high operational demands on AC-130 gunships until new AC-130JS center service. The MC-130 Watts Dragon Spear was renamed AC-130 Watts Stinger II in 2011. The precision strike packages consist of a 30mm gun and several precision guided munitions. Rails are mounted on the outboard pylon of the wing for four Hellfire missiles, SDBs, or SDBs under each. Ten common launch tubes, CLTs, are mounted on the rear ramp to fire Griffin A missiles, additional missiles are stored in the aircraft that can be reloaded in flight. 
CLTs are able to fire other small munitions able to fit inside the 6 in, 15 cm diameter, 48 in, 1.2 m long tubes. The Air Force launched an initiative in 2011 to acquire 16 new gunships based on newly built MC-130J Combat Shadow II Special Operations tankers outfitted with a precision strike package to give them an attack capability, requesting $1.6 billion from fiscal years 2011 through 2015. This was to increase the size of the gunship fleet to 33 aircraft a net increase of 8 after the planned retirement of 8 aging AC-130HS. The first aircraft would be bought in fiscal 2012, followed by 2 in fiscal 2013, 5 in fiscal 2014, and the final 8 in fiscal 2015. The decision to retain the C-130 came after funding for 16 C-27JS was removed from the fiscal 2010 budget. The AC-130J will follow the path of the Dragon Spear program. On January 9, 2013, the Air Force began converting the first MC-130J Combat Shadow II into an AC-130J Ghost Rider. The first AC-130J Ghost Rider was delivered to AFSOC on July 29, 2015. The first AC-130J gunships achieved initial operational capability (IOC) on September 30, 2017. The AC-130J has two planned increments. The Block 10 configuration includes an internal 30mm gun, small diameter bombs, and laser-guided missiles launched from the rear cargo door, and Block 20 configuration adds a 105mm cannon, large aircraft infrared countermeasures, wing-mounted Hellfire missiles, and radio frequency countermeasures. The Air Force decided to add a 105mm cannon to the AC-130J in addition to the 30mm cannon and smart bombs, the shells being more accurate and cheaper than dropping STBs. UFSOC is actively pursuing a directed energy weapon on board the AC-130J in place of the 30mm gun by 2022, similar to the previous advanced tactical laser program. It is to produce a beam of up to 120 kilowatts, or potentially even 180 to 200 kilowatts, weigh about 5,000 pounds, 2,300 kilograms, defensively destroy anti-aircraft missiles, and offensively engage communications towers, boats, cars, and aircraft. However, laser armament may only be installed on a few aircraft rather than the entire AC-130J fleet. The laser will be mounted on the side in place of the 30mm cannon. Other potential additions include an active denial system to perform airborne crowd control, and small unmanned aerial vehicles from the common launch tubes to provide remote video feed and coordinates to weapons operators through cloud cover. Called the Tactical Offboard Sensor DOBS, the drones would be expendable and fly along a programmed orbit to verify targets the aircraft cannot see itself because of bad weather or standing off from air defenses. UFSOC will initially use the Raytheon Coyote small UAV for the TOBS mission, as it is an off-the-shelf design with a one-hour endurance, but plans to fulfill the role with a new drone capable of a four-hour endurance by 2019. The Air Force was also interested in acquiring a glide bomb that can be launched from the common launch tubes capable of hitting ground vehicles traveling as fast as 120 km per hour, 70 miles per hour, while above 10,000 feet, 3,000 meters. In June 2016, Dynetics was awarded a contract by SOCOM to integrate its tactical munition onto the AC-130 designated the GBU-69-B small glide munition, the weapon weighs 27 kg, 60 pounds, and is armed with a 16 kg, 35 pounds, blast fragmentation warhead that can detonate by direct impact or at a selected height, despite being smaller. Being unpowered allows for its warhead to be heavier than those on the Hellfire and Griffin missiles, 9 kg, 20 pounds, and 5.9 kg, 13 pounds, respectively. 
Guidance is provided by a GPS receiver with anti-spoofing software and four distributed aperture semi-active laser seeker apertures adapted from the WGU59-BX for terminal guidance. Approval for fielding occurred in early 2017. Dynetics was awarded a contract to deliver an initial batch of 70 SGMs in June 2017, with plans to buy up to 1,000. The SGM can travel 20 miles, 32 kilometers. How far can a C-130 go without refueling? The C-130J was designed with the internal piping required for aerial refueling, but there are no current plans to field an aerial refueling capability. Range and Payload, General, the C-130E-H has a maximum range of 2,800 nautical miles, carrying no payload. As of 2018, AC-130 gunships have been providing close air support for special operators for 50 years. Although the aircraft have been kept relevant through constant upgrades to their weaponry, sensor packages, and countermeasures, they are not expected to be survivable in future non-permissive environments due to their high signatures and low air speeds. Military analysts, such as the Center for Strategic and Budgetary Assessments, have suggested that if SOC invest in more advanced technologies to fill the role to operate in future contested combat zones, including a mix of low-cost disposable unmanned and stealthy strike aircraft. Has an AC-130 been shot down? Iraq shot down one AC-130H gunship. It resulted in the loss of all 14 crew members, the largest single air power loss of the war. Post-war restriction on Iraq required the presence of gunships to enforce them. Can I buy an AC-130? The Super Hercules is finally available to the public. Like the legendary legacy C-130 Hercules series of ridiculously versatile military cargo haulers that was offered in civilian form under the L-100 designation, the C-130J Super Hercules now has a civilian variant of its own, the LM-100J, 